So it's like the Titanic moving, but it's moving, right? Um, I certainly feel safer in the environment. Uh, I feel that, and that's part of my age and, and um, you know, sort of my job and, and the, the power structure dynamic. I mean, there's certainly more women walking around the halls of the Capitol uh, than, you know, 20 years ago when I started. But for the most part, I feel a sense of safety because I'm surrounded by a bunch of badass women, right? And in addition to these men who would call me and say, I, I, I'm a little confused. How, how, do we stop hugging? Do we, like, do we not joke? I can't tell you the joke. And I said, it's not as gray as you think it is. And that's what I wanted to get. I wanted to get that conversation started. It's wanted versus unwanted, right? That You know what, that joke, considering this movement, you may wanna put a little you know, cap on that. We, we have to have that conversation with men and women and everyone around, especially in our business. These were tough, these are tough discussions. These are the kind of conversations and the allegations that I've never had to sit and vet as a reporter before, but as a bureau chief, it was my job to try to figure that out. And the second part, really quickly, is I determined that the larger story was the process of how Sacramento worked and the process of how the investigations happened and how these accusations were looked at. And so we pushed very hard for records, but there's still a lot that we don't know. We don't know how they determine what is and is not sexual harassment. They say they have zero tolerance. I'm not sure that definitions of zero tolerance are very clear. We don't know, uh, we don't know the punishment in some cases. We don't know a lot of that. There's a fine line here. Some of you may be sitting here thinking, why do I need to know all that? You may not, but these are people that need to be held accountable. They're elected officials, they're taxpayer dollars being used. We felt that that was important to talk about and we're gonna keep looking for it. Time, I'm a mother of four sons, but I have plenty of friends that have daughters. And there were plenty of young women that were my mentees in Sacramento and I did know and had experienced a lot of what you've read about. And so I thought about it, I wanted to be thoughtful. I think a lot of the women who came to the table were like me. I am a lot older than I look. Um, so like me, were veterans, you know, had been around the block a few times, weren't necessarily victims at the time, but had enough, to use your word, and I appreciate it, gravitas, um, that we, when the letter was signed by, by, by those 140 women, I mean, it was the who's who of politics and government, and it did really, really move the needle, I think, in a really big way. It's happening, and this is the reason why I chose not to name the person's name who um, sexually harassed me in my 20s, because I wanted that cultural shift. So, you know, there has been some retaliation, um, there's been some uh, members of the legislature, male, who say, yeah, we're not going to uh, meet with female lobbyists once the sun goes down. Oh, really? Because uh, you're still meeting with men? You are creating the, you are expanding the divide that we are talking about right now. So I responded accordingly. I said, you know what? You don't meet with me after five instead of doing a blanket you know, moratorium, meet with anybody, I am gonna go to my buddy over at the LA Times and tell him exactly what you said to me, so shut this down. That's the safety that I have versus you know, a year ago, I would have been you know, like SpongeBob uh, yeah, freaking out trying to figure out how I'm gonna handle this. But the army I have around me is allowing me to push back and have those really difficult conversations without being retaliated against. Wow.